Hello and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday the 17th of August. I'm Derek Clark and I'm delighted to say we're joined for the first time this week. First time in a, what appears, I think, a long time, Adam. Adam Thornton joins us. How are we doing, Adam? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, first time in a few weeks, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, lots to talk about, guys. Before we do so, uh, before I forget now, today is your last chance to uh, take part in our giveaway. I'm just going to flash it up on the screen there. Later on this month, on Friday the 25th of August, uh, the three Danes return to uh, Glasgow to reminisce about their time at Ibrox. Eric Bo Anderson, Peter Lovenkrantz, and Brian Loudup are coming back for a Q&A, a meet and greet. There'll be uh, a Danish-themed menu as well, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, now, we're giving away two pairs of tickets to that event and not only that you get to sit at the rangers review table so what more could you want it's totally free to enter all you have to do is subscribe to our newsletter head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash email bulletins or head over to the rangers review website click on subscribe to our newsletter bung your email address in there and that's it. That will be you entered into the draw. Existing uh, subscribers to the newsletter are also entered. You have until midnight tonight to take part in that. The draw takes place tomorrow. Um, so make sure, if you haven't already done so, uh, to do it today if you want to go and head over to what's sure to be a cracking event. Adam, I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, everyone will be looking forward to seeing Brian Loudrup, of course. Peter Lovenkranz is uh, well-loved. Eric Bo Anderson, we've not heard much about uh, no. in... in a number of years, of course, of course, back over there in Denmark. He always uh, he holds a special place, I'm, I'm sure, in your heart and mine for that double he scored against Celtic. But yeah, um, yeah he was a, he was a decent striker in his day. He was one of those ones that you maybe forget. They scored a decent amount of goals as well. It's not necessarily yeah. that um, that they come in and they flop and score two or three. Um, there's like flow as well, obviously flow with the money, etc. But you kind of forget them. <laughs> Decent chunk of goals were, were scored. Obviously, yeah. the highlights are um, twelve million pounds and and what that represented moving forwards. But yeah, decent amount of goals. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It should be good. Not sure a Danish menu is going to um, how how that's <laughs> going to go down with the with the Glasgow partners. But um, I, I expect there'll be a lot of what preserved fish and bacon, maybe maybe bacon. So yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think bacon would go down well. I, um, someone mentioned in the chat roll mops, uh, which is like the yeah. the. the yeah, nice. uh, herring, which I absolutely yeah. adore. I know yeah. it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if they've got that in the menu, I'll be all over that. Um, absolutely. So if they've got that. Danish pastries, perhaps. Who knows? Oh, yeah, um, but it's sure to be a, a cracking event, folks. So make sure you uh, enter what is a, a cracking giveaway. Um, right, let's talk uh, Rangers, Adam, to the here and now. Tuesday night was a tad nervy, was it not? But fortunately, we've got through where we'll play our old friends at PSV Eindhoven in a double header. Cannot wait for those matches. The first leg, of course, at Ibrox on Tuesday with the return leg uh, a following week on the Wednesday over there in Eindhoven. Sure to be uh, a real test for this uh, pretty young and, and, and recently put together Rangers squad. What did you make a Tuesday night, though, Adam? I think there was some, certainly some areas of concern and improvement required. We all know that. Um, but is there a bit of uh, encouragement after negotiating what was a, a tricky tie? Yeah, I feel a bit more positive about it now than than I did maybe right after the final whistle or or um, during the game, certainly. I guess there's lots of context, isn't there? There's new team coming together. Obviously, that that defeat at, at Rugby Park has thrown has thrown everything um, way yeah. off kilter. Um, but I guess in the cold light of day, getting the result that you need to get in a, a two legged away a two legged European tie is, is the name of the game. Um, we we got there. Um, we were fairly comfortable in, in the second half. I would say up until maybe the last couple of couple of minutes of of injury time when when those corners or, or crosses were getting pinged in. Um, first half was was yeah a bit of a, a bit of a shambles um, defensively mm. certainly, um, and then obviously not not being quality in front of goal that we would that we would want or expect from from the signings that have came in. Um, so yeah, overall it was a bit of a an uneven night I, I would say, but like I said, ultimately name of the game is to get get in the draw. Um, this time last year, I know it's maybe not a, not a good uh, comparison in terms of how the European campaign went, but certainly this time last year against USG we were more than ropey in, in that away leg 
possibly worse, I think, um, than, than against Servette. Uh, and we managed to pull it out of the bag against PSV um, in the two legs after that. So if we can take that as a comparison, then we'll see how it goes. I remember I was at that Union game. And I remember after 10 minutes, uh, I think I texted my dad or uh, Johnny, what have you, and I said, Ranger are going to squish this team. They're, 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 they're no great shakes. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they, they, they go up 2-0. Dodgy penalty right enough, but they, they had a, a great opportunity to make it 3-0, Three, yeah. which I think would have made it really tough at Ibrox. I know that, that they overturned the leg uh, in the second uh, second leg, return leg. Uh, but they were, they were a decent side. I think they got far in the, the Europa League, didn't they, last season? So uh, almost came close to winning the Belgian title last season as well. So, um, But yeah, another a good, a good result for... Rangers, Adam, and I think a big result for Michael Beale. Uh, that was a big one because uh, I've seen some supporters level the, the, the big games at him and, and the fact that he's sort of not, not came out on top in, in, in one of these big games, especially last season, if you chart back to the League Cup final, then the, the Scottish Cup semi-final. This was a, a huge game for him, I reckon. It was, um, and I think... That's the last two games that he has had a for me a direct impact and in, in changing um, yeah. the the game at the weekend. Obviously, with Seaman Matondo coming on at that point in the game, I think was just exactly what what the team needed to to go and get those those three goals at the end. And then I think midweek, as as Joshua said um, on on one of his articles as well, the there was maybe a temptation to change at half time and and maybe even try and go to a back three and sort of try and stem that flow. But I think the manager decided he was going to go. Um, go with what he had, but then try and be a bit more aggressive um, out of possession and in possession probably with the fullbacks and um, the wider midfielders. <laughs> the fullbacks had a horrendous first half. Well, a little bit unfair. Tavernier had a horrendous first half. I think Barisic was was just okay. There was a couple of moments that were shaky, um, but I think overall they were getting a lot of joy down those sides. So I guess the temptation is to almost fall back and try and soak that up and think about hitting on the break. But he sort of didn't do that. He's like, no, we'll get the fullbacks a little bit further up. We'll get the midfielders a little bit narrower and we'll try and press with more intensity. So, yeah, it was a big a big victory for, for the club and for Michael Beale. But I think that was kind of pleasing to see that um, some in-game tweaks that he, that he did for the second game in a row um, got as a result we needed. Yeah, totally agree. Um, right, folks, if you want to get your points across to myself and Adam, please do so. File them into the comments. Lots of comments coming in already. Uh, good uh, friend of the show, Graham Corkin, he says, uh, these qualifiers are a nightmare for every team. If you wouldn't go through it, well, you should have gone through it anyway, but get beat and it's a calamity. I uh, hate these early qualifiers. Don't we all? Uh, that was a, a potential... Um, I'm going to say banana skin. I think it's a bit disrespectful to Savet because they're a, a decent outfit, but um, it was crucial. Rangers got past there for, financially, as Adam touched on as well. For Michael Beal as well, I think it's a, it was an important game for him. PSV then, Adam, we'll, we'll, we'll look at Morton shortly, but it's going to be a different challenge for Rangers. They're a, a much better side than Servet. I think they're a, a much improved team than what, what the team that Rangers met last season, although I've seen that the Rangers line up when they took on PSV last Easy. season, you think you're, you're sort of bewildered at how they managed to get through those two legs, aren't you? So uh, it'll be an interesting one. It's just uh, it's so bizarre how things change so quickly. I think on the PSV side, Johan Bakayoko, who hadn't heard of, um, I was going to say this time last year, but this time last week probably I hadn't I hadn't even heard of him, and all of a sudden he's in and he's one of their best players, and uh, yeah. he's talking about getting getting moves to the Premier League. How things change is is terrifying, but then you look back at that midfield last year and it was, was it the home leg? Stephen Davis, John Lundstrom and, and Tom Lawrence starting uh, in the middle. Obviously, all three are still here, technically, but that midfield three now just looks completely as if it was five years ago. It's it's yeah. bizarre how quickly things change when you look at who's in there now. So, um, that that to me is is, is the thing. Um, still got Luke De Jong, still got Singari, still got Joey Veerman, but these players have been there another year or so now and they're, they're sort of bedded in. Um, if they can hang on to them, and I think there's a possibility that that one or two might go, um, maybe not before our ties, but certainly soon. Then it'll be interesting to see how they how they go this year. But yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that um, they appear to be um, a, a level up. Obviously, they had Gakpo last year, but I think his mind was was elsewhere, and I think that was probably reflected yeah. on the performances that he gave in he gave against us. Um, I think we'd be lucky for that not to happen again this year. Yeah, uh, a comment here, Sands had his best night in Holland. He certainly did. He was uh, Beckenbauer-esque over there in Eindhoven uh, last season. 
Uh, really was a, a tremendous performance from Rangers going uh, getting past PSV Eindhoven. Let's get to a few of the comments that are coming in uh, with regards uh, to that. Uh, Aldo says, uh, Derek, question for you both to go full strength Saturday so the team has another game to gel before PSV. Uh, that leads us nicely on. Now, Stephen Taylor also sort of echoes that on the back of that. He says, I think we play our strongest team on Saturday. More minutes on the pitch together to prepare for the upcoming PSV games. Then on to the old firm, which is just around the corner as well. Before we know it, it'll be here. Another must-win game for me. Rangers have to um, win that one just to send, out, send uh, out a marker, a statement of intent. However, the game at the weekend, Adam... Um, there was a comment coming about the forwards and misfiring at the moment, moment it's fair to say. But in terms of the team for Saturday, does Michael Beal go go strong or do you see a number of changes being made? Um I would I would like to see minimal changes in the forward areas. I think for, for the reasons that were that were just mentioned there, they need to get themselves up to speed um and up to speed quite quickly. Um so there, there have been a lot of changes in there anyway, but then within each game, um, there's been changes game to game, people still getting back to fitness, people being um, rotated out, etc. So I, I think we need to see that um, settle down for a few games. The issue, I guess, is that we've got games away to PSV in the middle of games at home at Livingston and away to Ross County and, and Morton. So different challenges for, for different players possibly, but I think where possible, we really need to see that. So for me, I would like to see... Danilo, Dessers, Lammers, all playing together um, as much as possible, just to sort of, as they said, to, to gel. I think we, we really underestimate, I think, how difficult it is to gel as an attacking unit. Yeah. I think yep. defending, uh, no disrespect or anything, I've seen a lot of comments about the Comarnock game and how they've got nine players coming in. I think it's it, it's a lot less hassle or a lot easier to to gel a defensive team and say, right, okay, make sure you're you're lines are okay, you're, you're, you're marking who you need to mark and, and you don't sort of move yeah. out of shape but you're not trying to go and create anything, it's almost like a safety first type thing so I can understand that's a little bit easier when you're when you're just trying to preserve rather than, than go and attack but attacking wise I think definitely we need to spend some time partners of play, understanding how how each other works, um, what type of passes that you can play into Dessers versus Danilo, can you play balls over the top for this one, what type of pass will Raskin make compared to Sifuentes, the midfield attack balance there and, and how they work together. I think we really need to get that get that going. Um, that is a difficult thing. And the only way that you can actually get that get that going and get that improving is time on the training pitch or time on the actual pitch um, itself. We don't have a lot of training pitch time. Um, and no. as Jim said, we need to keep a, a sort of yeah. settled side. Certainly middle to front as much as possible for me. Um, so in terms of, of changes, I'd be quite happy. I think the manager said a week back that, that Red Van might be in contention for this game, but I guess we'll find out in, in the press conference. Um, I would be looking at bringing in a couple of guys like that. I'd like to see Sterling start, um, whichever flank probably on the right-hand side, to be honest. Um, Tavernier has had a bit of a a slow start to the season in terms of his, his performance levels, etc., but also probably slow in terms of fitness uh, I think and it was maybe the same same last year as well so preserving him and getting getting him back to, to speed if we can would be good so I'd like to see Sterling come in I'd like to see Sterling play anyway um, I think that would be really really interesting he's the one that we've seen the least of so far so yep. that would be good um, Balogun I think maybe come back in um, whether it's Suter getting a, a rest given he's not long back from injury as well or whether it's Golson getting one again I'm not too bothered, possibly both. And we might see Ben Davies back. I think he's back in training this week, or we might see Leon yep. King. Um, I'm not sure. But that's the type of changes I think I've been making. Defence, uh, and then maybe Ryan Jack coming out. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's a game that Bailey Rice would get thrown into from, from the start, but I would love to see him get get some minutes uh, later on. Um, so yeah, that that's the type of things I'd be looking to do. But I, I definitely think front five, if you like, the two most attacking central midfielders and, and the... Um, the front three would be would be ones I'd look to try and keep in the team as much mm. as possible. Yeah, uh, interesting. Let's get to a few of the comments that are coming in. First of all, Thomas McCrimmon, McCrimmon says, Derek looks shattered, lol, up watching Star Wars all night. <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, that's nine hours of my life. I'll never get a fact. There's about 75 Star Wars movies now, is there not? But uh, yeah. you're, you're a Star Wars fan, Adam? I am, absolutely, yeah, 100%. Wow. Yeah. No, I am, so... Who's your, your favourite character in Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I don't R2 know. R two D two probably. I just for the just for the tunes. Um, but yeah, no, I am a fan of Star Wars. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next series coming out. Um, I know there's there's feels like there's been one every month, but there's there's one coming out next week. I think it is. So yeah, looking forward to it. I think you've just not brushed your hair. I think that's the problem. You're not. Yeah, that's not it. I've got a bit of uh, bedhead going on here. But uh, as so, there's a series now. It's not just films. Oh, there's loads of series. There. There's the Mandalorian. There's a uh, wow. uh, Boba Fett series. There's Andor. But there's another one coming out. Um, Ashoka um, is coming out next month. So there's loads of them on, on Disney Plus now. Yeah, they're ripping the arse out at big time. Yeah, uh, a few uh, comments coming in. Princess Leia's uh, Borna Bear's uh, favourite character. Gaz Jones says, Adam is a Jar Jar Binks man. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, he's uh, he's uh, frowned upon amongst the, the, the Star Wars fraternity, I'm sure. Uh, I was reading somewhere. But anyway, I digress. Let's look back to, to, to Rangers. Um, one player's come in for a bit of criticism, Adam. I'm keen to get your thoughts on him. Uh, Dean Anderson raises a point here. Morning, everyone. Derek and Adam, what are your honest opinions of Dessers? I trust uh, Michael Beale and his signings, but I'm concerned the bright lights of Ibrox are too bright for Serial. He said it himself. I think he spoke after the game at the weekend. Livingston, was it? I'm sure, saying he's, he's still trying to get uh, Matt Sharpness there. He's, he, he's, he was spent a bit of time in rehab at the tail end of last season playing catch-up, but uh, I know he's come in for a bit of criticism, Adam. What have you made of him so far? He has... He, he's not been great for me. Um, touch looks a little bit off. He, he looks way off the pace um, in terms of his movement, etc. He isn't going to be um, someone like Kyogo or, or even Danilo in, in terms of like the energy that we hope that, that Danilo brings. He's very much more and I don't like to make the, the direct comparison, but he's very much more a Cholak on, on that side, I think. He's, he's not going to be going out and pressing the fullbacks and dropping deep and being everywhere all, all across the pitch. He is going to be a number nine um, in between the posts. I, I don't think he's going to be as maybe one-dimensional as, as Cholak was. I think um, I, th I think Dessers has a little bit more to, to him than that, but I think there's a there's a catch-22 there for me. We have to play up to them in the right way, and we have to make sure that we're getting the... the Getting the uh, getting the balls to them that that they can bury. Um, we have done that a little bit. Dessers has had a few chances. There's been a couple of misses. The one on Tuesday night, um, I thought obviously it gets a little bit of a flick from from the keeper, but I felt like he just made the wrong option and maybe could have took it with his left foot. I, I don't know. Um, there's been one or two. Ultimately, he needs to improve and he needs to improve quickly. I think that's absolutely fine. Saying I'm I'm still coming back and I'm a little bit off the pace. You just don't get the time um, at Rangers. No. The amount of money that's been spent, as, as all fans will, will look at, and you'll be judged to a higher expectation based on that. That's just the way it is. So leeway isn't a thing, unfortunately. So um, whatever they can do to get him up to speed quickly would be great. But I agree, he doesn't look anywhere near what, what he looks, certainly in, in clips or games that I watched sort of him even last year, never mind the year before for, for Feyenoord. So it's important that he gets up to speed quickly. But I do think... If we can get service up to him, um, Raskin and Sifuente is getting up beyond and, and supporting him and, and kind of cutbacks, etc. for him. I do think he'll end up being a being a really good player. But I think in terms of what people are expecting, and rightly or wrongly, people are expecting Serio Dessers to be a 2019-level Morelos um, and able to do everything. I, don't, I think if you're expecting that from 99% of players, you're going to be left disappointed. Unfortunately, that was just one of those yeah. things. It was a perfect storm. So, um, not looking great so far. Um, but I do think uh, I, I'm not overly concerned, I would say. Yeah. Oh, if we could have the 2019 20 Alfredo Morelos uh, back at this moment in time, I think we would feel a whole lot uh, more comfortable going into these uh, games against PSV. Sky Larker says, uh, doubt there's much wrong with Dessa's mentality. He just needs to settle and get fit. Slight concern is that Feyenoord, they made a lot of appearances as a sub. Not sure if that was fitness or selection. Uh, and just off the back of that, that's a good point you raised, buddy. Um, Danilo was uh, used more as a substitute than as the main man. Adam, he missed a, an absolute sitter, of course. What a ball that was by Jose Fuentes, by the way, on Tuesday night. But um, it was a it was a bad miss from from Danilo. Aldo says uh, I see a lot of similarities with Danilo and Alfie. Um, what have you made of Danilo then? Again, I think I I went in early and said I think he would be really really good and he'd be similar to I guess what Raskin was in midfield for us, and and that would be the type of player that would really be able to take us up a few levels. Um, He's not been great. I think there was a few moments 
um, in, in all games where things have happened that you'd ideally prefer not, whether it's the ball going out of play, miscontrolling, level of pass, Sitter's been missed in, in both the, la- the last two games, um, hasn't been ideal, but I do like him. Um, I do think he's he's, cl- he's quick, he, he, he's clever, um, he, his movement is is really good, his link-up play I think is is decent when it when it comes off. I think that one for me is just uh, getting to know your teammates and, and understanding the type of areas that they play in and, and how you can support them. So um, I'm less concerned on on that side, I would say. I think he will be good. We just need to get a couple of players in place up there and, and just play so that they can repeat. Um, I like the run for, for the goal, bizarrely. The, the pass from Sefuentes, I think that's, I guess that's what I mean about that wavelength. I don't know if anybody would really have expected him to make that type of pass, but Danilo did. So he sort of gambled on it. He kept himself on on side and it was perfect really up until he had to hit the ball, which is not ideal. So um, <laughs> I think that part of it, that intelligence from from both of them is, is something that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify what I said earlier, Gary Clark says, get Alfie back, really? Uh, no, not, I'm not uh, saying bring back Morelos. I'm saying if we could have got the 2019-20 the when he was... Uh, running yep. rampage in the Europa League group stages, that Maria lost back, which uh, I think is, uh, is long gone, uh, unfortunately. I um, wanted to raise this point. Nice uh, uh, comment made by Graham Morrison. He says, Great day at Ibrooks uh, Blue Sky Lounge for my 60th birthday. What an experience. Museum, wonderful too. A must-see. Have you been to the museum, Adam? Yes. I went with my dad uh, two weeks ago now. Um, the first week I went. Um, fantastic. Yeah, they really liked it. Um, did the same. Went to the museum and then the Blue Sky Lounge for, for lunch, so it was good. So, yeah, really happy with it. Be interested to see um, how they, I guess, not expand it, but how they, they keep it updated moving forward, if there'll be regular rotations of exhibitions or themes and things over um, over over the years. But, yeah, it was it was really good. I was very surprised how eh, – not very surprised, but I was very pleased how, how good it was. Yeah, and happy birthday, uh, Graham. Hopefully you had a, a cracking day. It sounds a, a great day out. Um, just on the Euro squad, lots of comments coming. I wanted to get your uh, point on, Adam. Uh, of course, Michael Beale gets to choose a new squad for these uh, matches against PSV. There were some players that were omitted against Servette, namely uh, Tom Lawrence, Ben Davis wasn't in there, uh, Rabi Matondo and Kamar Roof. John Adams says, get Roof in the PSV squad, please. Um, would you be keen on doing that? Yeah, no, I think so. I think there's certainly now there are a couple of weeks um, further on. I think that would be something that, that would be quite interesting. Um, not seeing huge amounts of, of, of John Lundstrom, I guess, in the last couple of weeks might mean that there's a that mm-hmm. there's a spot opening up um, there in terms of certainly the European squad. So that's interesting. I know we're, there was a bit of chat about Rabbi Matondo, what he might have been able to do at the, at the midweek there. I'm not sure if that's it's probably completely directly just because of how how good he was when he came off the bench at the, at the weekend there. Um, I think it's a different ball game for for PSV, but yeah, I would be happy to see uh, Roof and Lawrence come in. The usual thing is who goes out, and that's the big the big debate that I think we we always have on these. You can't guys like Scott Wright etc you can't really take out because you then need to replace them with a with a Scottish yeah. player so um, yeah I think certainly come my roof I think it's now now time I think we've been quite patient very patient with them overall but certainly in terms of the last few weeks I think the manager's been quite patient with them you might see him for some minutes um, at the weekend coming off the bench possibly so um, yeah I wouldn't mind seeing him seeing him in um, Hadji's an interesting one for me Derek as, as David yeah. said there he's not had a lot of game time. I think knowing the type of player and personality he is, I don't know how happy he's going to be with the amount of game time that he's had so far. Um, it doesn't feel like he's he's anywhere close to to sort of being a, a first pick, particularly given you've now got Cantwell and Sefuentes and Raskin all playing in there and, and all ahead of him for the type of, of roles that he would play. So it be interesting to see what, what happens there. Um, I don't know if he's maybe one that, I don't know if he would take him out of the European squad, but is it maybe one that they might think both parties might decide there's something that we could we could do away from Ibrox for a bit? I, I don't know, but he, he seems like he's he's too good a player to to not be playing as much. Yeah, uh, interesting point being raised uh, by Skylark. He says can't see Roof making a group stage squad a la Defoe in 21-22, but we'd be happy to see yeah. Roof in for PSV as a new guy settle. Yeah, I go along with, with that. Do you think he's got a party play this season? I mean, it all depends on his fitness. Easier said than done, Adam, isn't it? After a player that spent more time in the treatment table than on the pitch, but it's he, he, he's he's. 
He's still by far and away, I think, the best finisher Rangers have at, at the football club. Do you think he's got a role to play this season, more so domestically, do you imagine? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, if, when spaces are at a premium for, for these squads, are you going to gamble on somebody who could literally get injured the next minute? Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, I completely agree with what you've said. Possibly the European games are, are maybe a step too far and he'd be better just focusing on, on the domestic. Um, do I, I do absolutely think he's he's had a part to play. I've been a big fan of him since since day one. Injuries, mm-hmm. etc., have been terrible. Um, and it's a shame, but yeah, on his day, I think he's great. The, the thing I like about him is he doesn't need this time to get up to speed or get back to fitness or anything, probably because he's so used to being injured, I guess. But um, yeah. He just comes in and gets on with it. We've seen uh, the European run uh, 18 months ago and then obviously last season as well in the in the semi-final. He just comes in and, and the big moments, you sort of trust him to to take um, to take his chances. So yeah, 100% if we can get him um, get him fit and firing, manage him well um, and get him into games that maybe we're struggling, um, then I think that would be great because he's a, he's a big asset in that sense. Yeah, just looking ahead to Saturday, I'll get to a few points that have been raised. Tam Brown says, I think the fullbacks in the midfield needs rotated leave Butland and the forwards in. Uh, Aldo disagrees. He says, I think Butland may drop out Saturday. Would you like to see Robbie McCrory between the yeah, sticks? I don't, yeah. I don't think that, that'll do him any harm. I think it's good to uh, rotate. I get no disrespect to Morton, but I can't imagine he'll be uh, have much to do on Saturday. And uh, Robbie McCrory, it'd be good to see him back and go. Yeah, no, I think that's a good shout. Butland has been... It's been great. A couple of big stops in, in yeah. uh, uh, at midweek there and, and also um, one on, on Saturday too. So I think he's been good. But yeah, I think that would be ideal. I think if, if McClory is going to stay and it's kind of went a little bit quiet on, on that front, I guess as well. But if he is going to stay, then I think the minimum he will probably expect would be to be the cup goalkeeper um, or certainly in the in the early rounds. So yeah, I think, I think McClory would probably come in. Yeah, uh, and a point here been raised by Joe just on the team. I would give Haji Matondo roof minutes and also change the defence of Sterling uh, to rest Tav and get Yilmaz and Balogun minutes. Just on Tav in here, Adam, uh, I know you're a, a big fan of him. Uh, he's come in for a bit of criticism this season for his form. You touched on the defence, and particularly in the first half in Geneva on Tuesday night was uh, a tad ropey, shall we say. However, he pops up with that goal that, that secures Rangers' passage into the playoff round. I think it's the 18th or 19th European goal, which is unbelievable. Um, there are concerns, though, that he has lost a yard of pace. Um, is there legitimate concerns about the right-back position at this moment in time? I would I would say so, yeah. Uh, not necessarily concerns um, there, but I would say with, with Sterling, who, who looks possibly... Further along than 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 guys like um, Zukowski or, or or Matt Polster or or, or John Flanagan, Sterling looks like he's coming in to, to want to compete with that. So I would say there's yeah. there's um, there's a challenge there. Anyway, what I would um, I, I guess say is, and it's the same with with Barisic. We can think that they, that they need to be changed all we like. We can lament their defensive abilities, but until other players step up and give what they give in the final third, then it seems pretty straightforward for me. I've always been one with Tavernier that the risk versus reward is is the, is the main thing there. Um, he's got over 200 goals now for the club. Yes, people will say anybody can score penalties. That, that's fine. Um, not anybody scored penalties in the in the Europa League final um, penalty shootout. If they did, we'd have won the league. So um, we'd have won it. So um, yep. I, 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 I think the risk reward is, is possibly getting, getting nearer. Um, but... Goals that are getting caused by by fullbacks, etc., is nothing new for us. That's happened all the time. Until they either stop creating and scoring in the final third, or until other players pick up that slack and make us less dependent on them, I think we're always going to want to keep them in the team, or the manager's always going to want to keep them in the team. That's just a simple fact. Me personally, I think I've said before, I would like to see us move to to maybe more of a more of a, a balanced fullback roles with, with Sterling on one side and Yelmaz on the other side and then putting the focus on the attackers so that the fullbacks are almost supporting the attack rather than being the attack um, but until such times as, as the attackers and midfielders step up their game and, and score an assist to a level that we expect um, I, I really think the manager's going to keep playing them so yeah Tavernier for me I think time time is always an issue with, with these things he's going to be 32 um, in a couple of months I think it's only natural that things will start to slow down um, but if we can sort of simplify that role a little bit and maybe take 
less of the attacking onus off of him and, and let him focus on just sitting back a little bit and rotating with Sterling, then I, I don't see any reason why he needs to be hounded yeah. out. The, cri- the criticism is always there, Derek. Even at his peak, the criticism is there. There are just some people who don't like a Rangers fullback who doesn't just stand there and defend and kick everything that moves. They, there's people that don't like a, a Rangers defender that doesn't do that. Um, yeah. That's just the way of it. You're never going to change those people's opinions. They'll never say that they were they were wrong. Um, they'll never say that. Um, they'll never they'll never sort of admit. Oh, yeah, actually, he, he does do quite a bit moving forward. It will always be negative. And I've, I've been the same on the other side. Um, it doesn't matter to me if there are moments that he's sort of getting caught at a position. If he's going to go up the park and and create and score and score goals, that's just the way that I I think things have worked at Rangers over the last few years. Um, so as an individual, I don't I haven't had any problems with that. But what I will say is. It's only going to get worse, I think, in terms of his his age and, and fitness and all those sort of things. So if we can start to um, rotate uh, and and phase that out um, or reduce that reduce that onus or needs on him, then I think I'm all for that. Yeah, uh, Jan says uh, Tab has a lot of miles on the clock. Will needs rotation at least. Yeah, he has played a lot of games since pitching up from Wigan at Ibrox. Uh, very rarely misses games. His fitness has been quite incredible. I can't. I know he was. Uh, he had that slight. Uh, not last season, Adam, but I can't recall a, a period of time, a lengthy period of time that he's been out injured at all since since he's been here. Rangers have certainly got their money's worth from him, haven't they? What, £200,000 he cost from Wigan? Um, yeah. He's certainly paid back. Uh, they paid that back and then some. Yeah, I think 55 season he was out for a bit, wasn't he, when pa- Patterson came in? Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. Maybe out for a couple of months. But yeah, other than that, I think it's it's been phenomenal. But um, yeah, and I think, I don't know how many appearances that is now. It's got to be, got to be well into the the mid hundreds um yeah. uh, in terms of that and you're right maybe not a lot of miles in his clock early on but i think the the role that he plays having to get up and down the pitch um so much as well we'll, we'll definitely take out of him so yeah, yeah be keen to keen to see him starting to get a bit of pressure taken off of him certainly from from this year onwards but like i said that that it's it's easy to do that but it involves other players um making yeah. themselves indispensable to the manager Absolutely. Uh, RFC 5 star says some brilliant points on Tav, Adam. So there you go. Some nice nice bit of praise. Uh, right, that'll do us there. Thanks to everyone for interacting with the show. Huge thanks to Adam as well for taking the time out to have a chat with us. We'll be back again tomorrow as we look ahead to that game at the weekend against Morton. But until then, enjoy your Thursday.